Okay, so here we are in 6.4. This is going to be graphs of sine and cosine. I'm, I'm covering minimalistically what you need to review for calculus. Uh, in other words, I'm not covering tangent graphs or secant, cosecant, cosecant. I'm not covering any other graph. You hardly see those in calculus. Tangent every now and then. It'd be great. If we had time, I would review tangent graphs with you, but we don't have any more. We can barely do what we're doing. So, um, um, yeah. When you took trig, though, I assume you learned how to graph tangent and the other functions, but you won't see those other functions in calculus. You see tangent every now and then. It's mainly, 95% of the time, it's sine and cosine. So if you know sine and cosine well, you'll be in good shape. Okay, so let's talk about the basic graph of sine and cosine. Where does sine start? Starts at the origin, yeah, and it goes up and down kind of thing. Where does cosine start? What's the difference between sine and cosine? Zero, one. one starts high, one starts low. Yeah. Cosine, where does cosine start? Yeah, up at one, huh? Starts up here at one. Where sine eventually goes up to one and down to negative one. Cosine starts there, you know, and goes down to negative one and then comes back up like that. Yeah, so the only difference between sine and cosine is, is a shift, a phase shift. They just then move sideways from each other. Otherwise, sine and cosine are exactly the same thing. They're just a little bit of a shift. You aware of that? Hey, why the names, why the code thing? You ever stop to think about that? Why do we have sine and cosine? Why not like something totally different? Something totally different. Why tangent and cotangent? Why seek it and co here? Why are half the trig functions the other ones with a co in the front? And it, I notice it's not always the upside down. Tangent and cotan are upside down, but sine is upside down with cosecant, not secant and cosecant. And sine and cosine are upside down, yet they're co functions. Why are they co functions? What does that mean? Why do they name it that way? What is, what is the significance of the co in the front? They're related. They're generally related. Sine and cosine. That relationship is true. But why do we, why did co, there's something about like pilot and co-pilot, right? What, what does co mean in that? What does that co stand for? Can't have one without the other? <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of true. <laughs> do you know what the co is the beginning of a word? When you say co? Yeah, it's really co. It's What does that mean? Complementary. Does this have an E here? Yeah. <laughs> Math teacher can't spell. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm okay with that. Complementary angles uh, add to be 90. It means, it means they're 90 degrees off each other. That's what it is. Secant and cosecant are 90, sine and cosine. It's just a 90 degrees phase shift. Uh, this one, see this, uh, this one has been moved forward. If you go to here, that's uh, pi over 2, 90 degrees. Anyway, um, not, we don't have to do much with that. But that's, that's why. Nine, they're just 90 degrees off of each other is all that means. All right, anyway, so with that in mind, they're saying, hey, um, examine the graph. Fine, what do they want? Oh, they, they want you to um, examine the graph and type the beginning and ending of the appropriate interval. Oh, what interval? Increasing. Yeah, it's up here. They want to know where is this graph here, this cosine graph, where is it increasing from? And they want like x values down here. See that? It's kind of a confusing question. They're saying, where's cosine increasing? Give me the x values. Now, increasing. What do we mean by increasing on a graph? Going up. Yeah. It just means like, hey, if you're on a roller coaster, right? Here's, here you are over here in this part of the roller coaster. Where on, on what sections of the roller coaster are you going up? Well, from here to there. You're going up. Huh, that's the increasing section of the roller coaster of the cosine graph. So that goes from on the x-axis from negative pi to zero, doesn't it? Everybody good with that? Negative pi to zero. That's all they want. Good. Once you know what they're saying, it's not a bad question. So where is cosine negative one? So here's the cosine graph. Where's that thing hitting down <clears throat> at negative one? Yeah, right, right there, it's hitting negative 1 at pi. 
That's all they want. Isn't this easy homework? Okay, so y equals 6 cosine x. They're asking me first, what's the amplitude? Yeah, the amplitude is that number in the front. The way I write it is I write a cosine bx. I think the uh, book, or the program, uses omega. It's a Greek W, basically. Whatever you want to call it. I just call it B in front of the X. So whatever's here, this is the amplitude. Amplitude's always what's right there? Amplitude. So that's the 6. That's just the number in the front. Okay. And now cosine of, of BX. So the B, there, there's nothing. It's just 1. Huh? There's nothing in front of the X, so it's 1. What does that mean about period? There's a little form. This, will, you, this you want to put in your 3x5 card. So on your 3x5 card, uh, here's, here's most, probably the most, yeah, definitely the most important formula we'll use in this section is the period formula. What's the, anybody remember that? 2 pi over B, or omega. The book will call it omega. Either way, we both just mean 2 pi over the number in front of X, whatever you want to call that. So whatever's in front of X, in our case, it's just a 1. So the period is 2 pi over 1. So the period's just 2 pi for this one. So the period is 2 pi divided by whatever number's next to the x. And that works for sine or cosine. Either one. And the amplitude's the number in the front. Can we could use something bigger for the final. So, I mean, you, like, as far as the 3 by 5 card. Oh, uh, yeah, you get a full sheet of paper for the final <laughs> both sides, yeah. Okay, so y equals 6 cosine pi x. What's the amplitude? Thanks. There's a number in the front. All right, let's find the period. The period formula is, is 2 pi over b. 2 pi over b. Okay, what's the b in this problem? The b is the number next to x. Yeah, it's the pi. So 2 pi over pi, boom, period's 2. Good? These are the easy ones. I'll move on if you're okay. Okay, so and what's the amplitude? Yeah, it's just that fraction in front. Okay, now the period will be a little more tricky. Period is 2 pi over b. <clears throat> Can you finish that up? 2 pi over b. So what's the b? It's this whole... Oh, by the way, I should say, remember how we learned um, Tuesday? No, last Thursday? that um, we never leave negatives inside a sine or cosine. So this, this negative right here is either going to completely vanish or it's going to jump to the front. Didn't we learn that? Even or odd functions, even or odd functions, the negatives plugged in vanish. Let me review that for you real quick. Um, here's, how I, here's, here's, here's how I memorize it. Memory. <coughs> Sine, the normal order we list the trig functions in, just sine, cosine, tangent, that's just the normal way we list them, you know, sine, cosine, tangent. I just count one, two, three. This is how I survived college. I've told you I have a terrible memory. Um, and so to for all those memories, so I just do tricks like this. So I just go, hey, one, two, three. One's an odd number. Three's an odd number. Two's an even number. There we go. Cosine's an even function. That works. Sine and tangent are odd functions. Okay, so what? What does that mean about being an odd function? Well, with odd, odd is like x cubed. That's where we get odd. And even is like x squared. So think about putting a negative into an odd function. What, what, what would happen if you put a negative into x cubed? Well, that negative would just be negative, huh? Because three negatives is just negative. But what would happen if you put a negative into an even power? it would come out positive. In other words, the negative would just totally vanish, wouldn't it? That's the difference between sine and cosine. So um, for sine or tangent, for sine or tangent, negative inside goes to the front for sine or for tangent. For cosine, negative vanishes. Right? See how the negative here became positive. Just like x squared. So even functions, cosine, and even function, 
is just like an even power. What, what do even powers do to negatives? They totally vanish. Negatives plugged in. What do odd powers, odd functions, sine and tangent, do to negative powers? The negatives go to the front. So remember we learned about that being even or odd? So you never have to leave a negative inside of any trig function. Sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. All of them. If you've got a negative plugged in, it either completely vanishes if it's cosine or his upside down, secant, or it comes to the front if it's sine or tangent, odd functions, or their reciprocals, um, cotangent and cosecant. All right, so what do we got here? Sine, so where's that negative going to go? Is it going to vanish or come to the front? It's going to come right to the front. So the negative just goes to the front. Now, does that mean we say amplitude is negative 9 sevenths? We probably should. There's no really good reason we don't, but we don't. We just we, we never say negative on amplitude. It's just it's just common social convention. There's no logical reason. Just like why don't we say when we say how far how far down to LA? It's negative 250 miles because it's south. We we don't say negative for south. Maybe we should, but we don't. Right? We don't put signs on distance. We just don't talk that way. That's exactly why they don't give the negative on amplitude. There's no good reason. Just it's the social convention that all you mean is the number. You don't care about positive or negative. So the ampli even though there is a negative in the front, and that will do something to the picture, we'll see in a minute. You probably already know. What does a negative multiplier do to a graph? Negative Shrink multiplier? It's going to, well, the, um, oh, it'll, the negative part of it, the 9 sevenths will it'll do something, but the negative part of it will flip it vertically. Yeah, so it'll affect the graph for sure. But we just say 9 sevenths, so the negative comes to the front. Period 2 pi over b, the b is 2 pi over 7, right? There's our, there's our b. Grab that thing, 2 pi over 7, and give it a flip. So 2 pi over 7 flips up. So we have 2 pi times 7 over 2 pi. These guys cancel. Period is 7. All is well? Questions on that one? So never leave negatives plugged into any trig function. Cosine vanishes, sine comes to the front, even in odd functions. All right. All right, three cosine of a half x. So what do we know? What do we know? Let's think again about what we know about sine and cosine graphs. Where do sine graphs start? Middle. In the middle, at the origin, zero, and then they do their up-down thing, right? Where do? Whoops. Where do cosine graphs start? They start at high or low if they're negative. Okay, so this is a cosine graph, and he's got a 3 in the front. Now, that's the amplitude. What is, where does that affect? That's where it starts, huh, at 3, because the normal cosine, if you have no number, well, what, how about this, whatever number's in the front here, that's where the cosine starts. So he's going to start at 3. So which one of these graphs start at up 3? See, we're done. We don't even need to worry about any. We don't need to worry about period or anything on this one. It's a, these first couple. They'll keep them pretty simple. The amplitude alone will determine the answer. So that one starts at up three. That's the only one that starts at up three. <coughs> See what I mean? This one starts at zero. That's like a B is like a sine graph, huh? Starts at zero. A is like a sine graph. He's starting at zero also. Uh, this D is starting down two. So that's like a cosine upside down. So our answer is C. All right, so minus 2 cosine one third x. So it's a cosine graph. So sine starts at the origin. Cosine starts high or low. It's going to start at the negative 2, isn't it? Which one does that? Which one starts at negative 2? A does. B starts high, no way. C starts in the middle, no way. D starts in the middle, no way. Everybody see that? See where they're starting? So it's all about their starting point, where they are right at the y-axis. That's the starting point. That's when x is zero. Right? Is that making sense? So the only one that starts at negative two is that. Is the answer. Mm.
Yeah, well, no, so, good question. Yeah, what if we had a negative 2 sine graph? So it still start at the origin. Sine always starts at the origin. But what would the negative 2 mean he does? Instead of going up first, he would go down first, then up. So that's what, that's what a negative does on sine. It makes him go down. But, he, but sine always starts at the origin. Whereas cosine starts high or low, not never the origin. Everybody see that difference? So cosine always starts high or low. Cosine does. And sine always starts at the origin. If cosine is negative, he starts low. If sine is negative, he goes down first. That's what he does. Good. Not too bad. You guys remember all this? You guys have good memories? Memorize all these little facts for all, all of your classes? Anybody taking anatomy right now? Rudy, you taking anatomy? Is that horrible? I would die. Right now it's bad. Yeah, isn't it not bad, bad also? You have to memorize, like, how many, how many things you got to memorize, like, for a typical test in there? Like, seven, how many bones in the face or whatever? Or? Yeah. 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 I would. I would die. You got to have a great memory. Do you do flashcards all the time, or just keep looking at the pictures? Yeah. Yeah. It's all memory, memory, memory. Yeah. yeah. We're all different, and I. I was made without a without a memory. <laughs> I couldn't survive in those classes. I don't know. I was kidding my wife. She, my wife has this perfect memory, and we've been married for a long time. Um, tw yeah, we're coming up on 27 years now. I even struggle to remember that. And she'll remember things way back, you know, and something we did. And, and I, I'll, I like to kid her and say, honey, it's like you're a widow. It, you, your memories are your own, you know. I, 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 it's, I, was I there? I don't even remember. Anyway, so let's try this one. So let's see, figure out which graph it is. So this one you're going to have to think about period a little bit, huh? Yeah, because where does sign start? Oh, yeah, so, so they... But they all start at the origin. So that's not going to do anything for us. But what, what does that positive 2 do? They all start. That doesn't mean it starts up to, right? That's cosine that starts high or low. But that does mean something about where he goes. They all, sine always starts at the origin, but it means he goes up first, not down. So these are out, because huh? these ones are going down first, down first. That's not correct. This is going up first, up first. So it's either A or C. Now, we've got to figure out which one based upon the period. So can you do a little period work on this and figure out which one it is, A or C? Yeah. Period. What's the period formula? 2 pi over B. So the period is going to be 2 pi over B. So 2 pi over, what is B? It's the B, 1 fourth. B is 1 fourth. Okay, there's our B. All right, and so what do you do with that one-fourth? You grab it, and you flip it up, huh? So 2 pi times 4 over 1. All right, good. Which is 8 pi. So the period is 8 pi. Now, what, is, what does that mean, period? You've got to be real clear on what that really means. Let me, let me draw a couple pictures make that real clear for you. So sine starts low, uh, start, starts at zero, I mean, goes up and down, that's one period for sine. Meaning, that's the whole, that's his whole story, and then he just keeps repeating that, to the right, to the left, forever. You with me on that? That's what it means by your period, your cycle. It means how long until your whole story is done. 
That's his whole story. After that, he just does it again and again and again and again. What does he do again? He goes up and then down and back to zero. Up and then down and back to zero. Up, you know, except the other way. Then, you know, same thing. It's on and on. Da, 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 forever. So one period is from here to here. It's up and then down and then back to zero. That's for sine. Okay, so when we say the period's a pi, we mean starting here, go up, down, back to zero. Right there, that should be one period. So this is 16 pi, that is 8 pi. Perfect, it is A. Does that make sense? They're showing me two periods there. Trying to trick me. Is that good there? Does that make sense? What's, uh, what's one period for cosine? Because we're going to have him in a minute. So for cosine, he starts high, so down and back high again. That's one period for cosine. So one period for cosine is start high, end high. One period for sine is start zero, end zero. And if cosine is flipped upside down, then cosine will start low, end low. Cos cosine is a big U. One period of cosine is a U. One period of sine starts zero, goes high, low, back to zero. We good with that? High, low, back to zero. All right. Okay. So y equals cosine 5x. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Can you tell? What's, where, where should, it's a cosine graph. Where should this one start? Yeah, because the amplitude in the front here, there's an invisible one. So, which one of those start to set up one? B. So we already got the answers B. That was, we didn't even need to mess with the period stuff. That was pretty easy. But let's go ahead and answer the domain and range because that's the other, they're going to ask for domain and range and the other two parts remaining down there. So, okay, what's the domain? Domain is sideways, huh? Remember on a graph and a picture? Domain is left edge, right edge. So how far left, how far right? Yeah, see the arrows? Arrow here, arrow here, negative infinity. So the domain would be negative infinity to infinity. What's the range on this one? Range is up and down, isn't it? Yeah, how low does it go? How high does it go? Negative 1, positive 1. And that would be brackets because it hits negative 1 and positive 1 right on the money. Solid brackets, whereas the infinity skip parentheses because you're never right on infinity. All is well? Six cosine one sixth x. So I'll try with flash and thing again. So what do you think? No, it's gotta be A right off the bat, huh? Because it's cosine, starts higher, it starts at positive six. It's A. Whereas this one, B starts at zero, C starts at zero, B and C are sine graphs, aren't they? So it's A, and then domain and range would be easy. Let's move on. Okay, so that uh, negative 1. Now think carefully. Remember what we learned about moving graphs around. It'll all still apply. You know, it's always true. So that negative 1, ask yourself, is that negative 1 there at the back? Is that in X's world or outside of X's world? How do, how does, how do things get to be in? Like, how do, you, how do you know if it's in? There would have to be parentheses. It's not in, because there's not parentheses. Everybody see that? If there were parentheses, then it would be a right-left. Then it would be an X's world. It would be a right-left <laughs> kind of thing, wouldn't it? But it's, it's not. So that's a Y effector. It's, it's going to make an up-down effect on the graph, because it's not an X thing. It's not in X's world. It's after the function. It's outside of X. Good to there. Now, the question is, what, what will it do? What will that minus one do? Yeah, grab, grab the whole graph and move it down one, won't it? The whole entire graph will move down one. And so to get the graph, I think the easiest way to go about it is to just move the midline down one. Do you know what I mean? Normally, normally think, think about these graphs for a minute. Normally, sine starts here, goes up and down. Notice the x-axis shoots right through the middle of sine if it, if, it, if it hasn't been moved. And cosine starts high, goes down and back high. 
the x-axis also shoots through the middle of cosine. So normally, for sine or cosine, if they haven't been moved vertically, the x-axis spears right through the middle of the sine and the cosine graph, right? So midline. But when you got that minus 1 out there, that's going to make a new midline, isn't it? So that's the, that's the best way to start. Y'all hearing me on that? That'll really help you. So put that down first, right there at negative 1. That'll be our new midline. That's going to be the middle of the graph. So forget about the x-axis. Just ignore the purple line now. Just pretend the because that, that's like the new x-axis. That's the new middle. So now, from that middle, how far, and this is a cosine, <clears throat> how far above and below that middle are we going to go? Three. Yeah, that's the amplitude, huh? That's the 3. So I'm going to go 3 up and 3 down. So if I go up 1, 2, 3, where am I at? Up three. I'm at positive two. That's going to be the top of the graph, isn't it? I'm going to make a little box. I'm basically going to make a box. I think that's about the easiest thing to do. And then go down three. One, two, three. Down three. Where am I at? Negative four, right? So my graph is going to go from negative four to positive two. So I, and the middle is going to be negative one. So I figured that out, right? This number out here, that negative one means move the graph down one, so I move the middle down from zero, where it normally is, to negative one. That dotted line's the midline. And then the amplitude, amplitude, what is it? How far above and below the midline? So three above, three below the midline. It's going to go from negative four to positive two. That's probably enough to grab it right there. Which, ones, which of these graphs go from negative four to positive two? Yeah, it looks like A does, huh? Like negative four, positive two. Yeah, I would say A. It can't be um, it can't be B. B doesn't even reach down to negative three. It can't be C. C like the whole thing is below, it doesn't even go above the graph. So it's A. And then domain and range. What what would be the range on this one? Yeah, the negative four to the two with brackets. Good? Y'all see how I did that? So you, that number off to the right is your midline, isn't it? Let that be your midline, negative 1, and then go above and below that by 3. Right. Yeah, see if you can uh, do the same kind of thing. Don't let that negative 2 in the front of cosine throw you off too badly. It still means, it just means it starts 2 down below the midline, huh? It goes, starts 2 down, it still goes above and below its midline by 2. It just means it starts 2 below the midline. Where's the midline on this one? Well, the, the middle is negative 5, and then yeah, it'll start at negative 7, right? So this, this right here is the midline, negative 5. So here's the excess. Negative 5 there. That right, good? So that's the middle. <clears throat> Right, so whatever's out here means the whole graph has been moved down 5. So the middle, which is normally at 0, the x-axis, has been moved down 5. And that means the top and the bottom have been moved down 5 as well. huh? So this 2 is the amplitude. That's how far above and below the midline we go. So I'm going to go 2 up, 1, 2. And I'm at negative 3. And 2 down. And I'm at negative 7. Is that good? So our window, our box, which is going to hold our cosine, is going to go from negative 7 to negative 3. And um, where's our first dot? Negative 
down here at negative 7. Yeah, because it starts low, huh? Starts, it starts at 2 below, right? That negative on the cosine means it starts 2 below. So which of those starts at negative 7 and goes up from there? Looks like C right here, huh? Starting at negative 7 and going up from there. Yeah. It's getting comfortable. So if you could do that on an exam, nail it down. Questions on that one? All right. All right. Give some thought to that negative being plugged in. Remember, we never leave negatives plugged in to free function, type of the tangent, whatever. What are we going to do with that negative that's getting in there? Does it, does it vanish? Remember, it either vanishes or comes to the front. Is cosine an odd function or an even function? Even. Yeah, remember my little memory device, because I have no memory. Cosine is even, right? Because I just did sine, cosine, tangent, 1, 2, 3. Cosine's an even number. Cosine's even, which means it's like x squared, x squared, even powers, negatives vanish. So that negative, pretend it was never there. It, it's making no difference. You can just totally ignore it. It's an even function. So, yeah, so get rid of that first off, then just go back to business as usual. So what's the midline on this one? Well, just zero. There's, there's no number out here added or subtracted. There's nothing. So the middle's just zero like normal. The four-thirds is just how far above and below. So, um, oh, yeah, here's one. We're going to do period. Just It's like you called it, Carissa. Because uh, this one, uh, which ones start at up four-thirds? Well, two of them, huh? This one. And see, it's not B because he only starts at two-thirds, doesn't he? So he's not right. So it's either A or C. Because A and C both start at four thirds, they both fit the amplitude correctly. So you're going to have to do the period thing to figure out which one is like. Jeffrey's always right, and it's a little two pi scales for each other out. Yeah, right. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So let's go ahead and see how that's true. So remember the period formula. 2 pi over b, the most useful formula for us, 2 pi over b, and uh, the b is the, remember the b is the thing next to x, uh, 2 pi over 3. So the period is going to be 2 pi over b, and b is 2 pi over 3. Grab that, flip it up, and um, we have 2 pi times 3 over 2 pi. Boom, those cancel 3. So the period's 3. Everybody see how we did that? So the period three. Now, what does that mean about the three? Well, that's, that's it right here. That's good because this is one period of cosine. One period of cosine uh, starts high and finishes high for one period. Sine, remember we talked about that, right? Sine starts at zero, goes up, down, back to zero. That's one period. But cosine, he starts high, down, back up. That's one period for cosine. So, yep, that's it's A. All is well? Because whereas the C went to one-third, didn't it? That wasn't right. Questions? Okay. Right. Mm Amplitude is 5. Period is 2 pi. Now they want us to work backwards. They want us to come up with the equation. So these, these last five or six problems are all backwards problems. Rather than starting with the, uh, the equation... They're going to give us information, and we end up with the equation. So, can you do that? The amplitude is 5, and they're all sine, so it's going to be y equals 5 sine of something x. So these guys are out, huh? A 2 doesn't go in the front. The 5 goes in the front. So now we just got to find b. How do you find b? Well, the period formula, huh? Period is 2 pi over b. We just keep using that formula. That's why you definitely want to have that 3 by 5 card. Period is 2 pi over b. What is the period? 2 pi, they told me. So they're two, yeah. So two pi is actually the period, huh? And then I'm going to solve that equation for b. Now that one's so easy. You can just look at it and you go, well, huh, two pi over what is two pi? Well, one, right? But in a minute they'll get a little more challenging. So how would you formally solve it if you couldn't just see it? You put this over one, go diagonal, diagonal. When you have two equal fractions, you just cross multiply. So that would be two pi times b is two pi times one divided by the two pi. Boom, sure enough, B is 1. So it's, it's that right there. B is 1, it's just 1. 5 sine 1x, or 5 sine x, huh? Good? 
All right, let's try one. Is super useful. So uh, why? So they're they're giving me a, a graph, and now they want me to work backwards from the graph. I like these. So no secrets with me. These are the kind I put on the exam for sure. And the reason is, um, so there'll be two two on exam number four, I think. Maybe even. At least one, maybe two on the final. Probably just one. There's one of everything in the final. Wait, didn't you so, say this one wasn't on exam four? Uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, you're right. Six four is not on exam four. So this is on the final. Know. Yeah. So two of these on the final. Thank you. Good. On, yeah, yeah this, none of this stuff is on. We're already past exam four material, right? So two of these on the final. Yeah, so I know I'd seen two of those some recently. Two of these. Or well, I know I put two on the practice final. I can't remember what's on the actual final. Probably just one. Anyway, there, there. One or two. They're there. Why am I so into these? Well, because these are what people would do in real life. This is what I was like to see. I, I enjoy applications in math. This is where it would be used in the real world, like what an engineer would do, for example, with sines and cosines. Well, how would an engineer operate? They wouldn't start with a function. They would be out like, yeah, I was out doing some civil engineering, you know, surveying, or I was, I was you know, building this motor with mechanical or electrical, and boom, there was an equation. No, 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 no. Machines and, and roads don't just spit equations at us, do they? That's not real life. You, you, you start by observing what the machine is doing or what's coming out of the current, and it's going up and down and up and down. And you measure it with a multimeter or some kind of device, and then you, and then you, and it gives you a little picture of the graph on the screen, doesn't it? Or you make a record as you're, you know, watching the waves go in and out. You keep a record of how long out, how long back in. And from that, you can draw a quick little graph, right? It starts here, goes up, goes down. So, so, we, so now it's real life engineering and stuff. You start with a picture. You don't start with a formula all of a sudden. You start with a picture. You start with observing something in the real world and get a picture or data from it. And then you work backwards to the equation. And because you need that equation then to say, okay, I need to know when it's going to go up again. So use the equation to predict that, right? That's what equations are helpful to us for. I'm going to combine it with some kind of other thing called a capacitor or something to do something. You need equations for that. So this is more real life. That's why for sure these are on the exams, what an engineer would do. I've got, I've got a son that he thinks he wants to be my 14-year-old. He's a... Uh, Here's different because you know I I'm not engineering type even though I enjoy the real life application I was an I, I was I transferred to to Cal Poly as an engineering major and within one year switched out because I realized these hands of mine can do nothing nothing I'm good with stuff in my head nothing with my hands I literally I actually um, got I, I transferred as a junior I went to junior college, you know, like you all, for three years, actually, and then transferred, and I, so I transferred right into junior level engineering classes, so I transferred as a junior, and right away, I just went into this class, and they're like, oh, all right, there's breadboards on all your tables, I was in a lab setting, wire up that circuit, and I'd taken circuitry classes, I could do all the calculations, it's all math, I could do all that great, you know, but when it was an actual physical thing sitting on my table, and they wanted me to wire it up, I was completely lost. I remember looking, walking around to my friends for help. How do you do that? How do you make those things connect? Why is that? They had all done it. They would all grown up, like, wiring things. I didn't know what a breadboard was. I thought it was like bread. I, I don't know. Maybe some of you know. But they said breadboard. They meant a thing that holds electrical circuits. I didn't know that. I, anyway, so I am not an engineering type at all. So I quickly switched over to math, but I realized I was in trouble. Anyway, so, um, so but engineers would do this. So, so, so let's answer this question. What's, what, so let's start with looking at that graph. What's the, uh, what's the, first of all, first off, is it a sine or a cosine graph? Cosine. Yeah, how do you know it's cosine right away? Um, it's up down. Yeah, it, well, and it, it starts, remember, cosine, sine is all about the starting. It starts, starts low instead of starting at the origin on that. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably, it's a sine graph shifting. Yeah, but, but I don't want to shift it because that's hard. But you're, but, but, but you're totally right. I mean, you can make this sine. This is sine or cosine because the only difference between sine and cosine is a shift. But to make it as easy as possible where we don't have to move anything, it's directly, immediately a cosine graph because it starts low instead of starting. Remember, cosine or sine, 
I mean, cosine starts high or low, doesn't it? Whereas, so, so sine graphs always, whoops, 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 whoops quick here. Sine graphs always start at the origin and then go up or go down, whereas cosine starts off the origin, either high or low. So this is a cosine graph if we don't do any shifting. So it's cosine, and it's starting at, is that negative 5 or 6? It looks like negative 5 probably, huh? Negative 5 cosine, because starting down, negative 5 cosine, okay? And then I need the bx. So all I need now is to find the b, and I've got the formula. I know the amplitude. So how do I find that b? Well, use the formula, the period is 2 pi over b. Um, what is the period, though? Can you look at that picture? This is what engineers would do in the real world. Can you look at that picture and um, figure out the period? Well, that's where we've got to be clear. Like, now, remember what period is. Period is one cycle. Not, you can't go beyond it or fall short of it. You've got to do exactly the beginning and end of one cycle. Well, what is that? Well, for sine, for sine, one cycle goes high, low, back to zero. So this is where you've got to be crystal clear on what one period, one cycle is for sine. But I'm not doing sine. I'm doing cosine. So what's one cycle for cosine? Starts high, finishes high. It's one period, one cycle. Or if he's upside down, then he starts low, comes back to low. One period. So we want to start low, come back right there. So where's that? Looks like seven. One, cycle, one period, seven. Do you see, see how I'm coming up with that? So you've got to be clear on what one period is. So for cosine, one period is the U or the upside down U. And for sine, one period is start zero, up and down, back to zero. So that's one cycle. But what, why is that one cycle? Well, that's just the part that, you know, if, once you've done that, that's the whole story. It just keeps repeating, repeating, repeating. That's the whole story for cosine or sine. That's their whole story. Then they just repeat their story after that. So that's one period, one complete cycle. So therefore, it's seven where he, he goes from 0 to 7 in one period. His period is 7. So 7 is 2 pi over b. Solve for b, because I've got to put b in my formula. Put this over 1, diagonal, diagonal. 7b is 2 pi times 1. So 7b is 2 pi divided by 7. b is 2 pi over 7. So pop it in right there. 2 pi over 7x. So there's our formula. See how we got the formula from the picture there? So I, I, I observed it was cosine because it started low, amplitude negative 5, and then I saw the period was 7, the end of one cycle. So 7 equals 2 pi over b, solve for b equals 2 pi over 7. There's that formula will produce that curve, or this formula matches that picture. So you, as an engineer, you could use that to do things then. All right, try that one. Take that picture and work back to the equation. This one's actually pretty easy. It's not as hard as the last one. You can nail it down. You don't have to do the period stuff on this one. You don't. Just, just look at the amplitude. Just decide if it's sine or cosine first off. And how do you decide that? Starting point. Where does it start? Right there. There's the start. So is it is it sine or cosine? <coughs> cosine, because it does sine starts in the middle, the origin. Cosine starts off the middle, either high or low. So it's, it's a cosine starting at five eighths. Which one's a cosine with a five eighths in the front? Only D. D is the only one that has a five eighths in the front and is cosine. I don't even need to think about period and all that stuff. It's for sure D. Nice and easy, right? Let's move on to there's harder ones. Let me, let me, I better help you. Just, you know, one of, the, one of the main things on this one is you really have to have the midline. You know what I mean? If you think back to the graphs for a second, like sine, what does the sine graph look like? Up and down. Well, I did, I did a bad job on that one. 
Um, it goes up and down. See how the x-axis spears through the middle of sine? And, and remember, cosine, which starts high, goes down and back high. See how the x-axis also spears through the middle of the normal cosine? So you have to have the middle. That's important. So what's the middle? Well, it looks like, well, look down here. See how 7 isn't, or I'm not, not that's not the middle. See how 7s are at the, at the back here? See how 7s are at the back? That must mean that 7 right here is the mid, negative 7, is the midline. So you've got to get the midline on the picture because they're all about their middle, aren't they? They go above and below their middle. It's all about their middle. So the middle for this graph must be negative 7 because, so, so therefore, we've got that on our picture. So it's, it's not this one, is it? Because that one has a plus 7 at the back. The middle's not up 7 for sure. So the middle is down 7. It's one of those three. Okay. Now, look at it that way. So forget about the x-axis. Just pretend this thing's not even here. Just look at it like that now. Try to decide which of those graphs is right. I mean, which of those equations is right. So does he start? Where's his start? Right here. Is that on his middle or off his middle? Remember, this is like... This is like the new origin right there, right? So does he start on his middle? No. He's cosine. Everybody see that? He's, you might, that's what's convenient. Think, well, no, he's, he's starting at the origin, Mr. Aaron. Well, yeah, but that origin is not the real origin anymore. Everybody see that? In other words, it's a cosine graph that's been moved down. You see? It's a cosine graph that's been shifted down. Am I confusing you? So you've got to put that midline on. You've got to look at that like it's the new x-axis because that's, that's their start. So when I say where do they start, I mean relative to their middle. So he starts above his middle, doesn't he? He starts higher than his middle. The whole nature of sine is to start right on the middle line. The whole nature of cosine is to start above the middle line, at the top of the action. So this is a cosine graph. He's starting above his middle. He's a cosine graph. So get rid of that one, huh? So it's one of those two. To figure out which one, we've got to do the period thing, don't we? What is the period? Two-thirds. Two-thirds, yeah. Because remember, it starts high, finishes high. That is one cycle. That is the period. The period is two-thirds, isn't it? And what's the period formula? The period formula is 2 pi over b. So the period, 2 thirds, is 2 pi over b. This is what you want to have in your 3 by 5 card, that important formula. Period is 2 pi over b. So, so we know right now that, that this is a 7 cosine bx minus 7. We know that much so far. You with me? Why is there a 7 in the front? Well, because... The middle is negative 7, and it goes 7 above that. That's why it hits 0, you see. That's the 7 amplitude in the front, the minus 7 at the back. So let's solve for b. Cross multiply. So 2b is 3 times 2 pi. 2b is 6 pi divided by 2. b is 3 pi. So b is 3 pi. There it is. This, this right here is 3 pi. See how we did that? That was a little more tricky, wasn't it? We had to put that midline on and it all, all the thinking. So cosine starts above the middle, above his middle. Sine starts on his middle. you got to put the midline on to see what you need to see. Questions? Good? Okay, try that one. Yeah, yeah, that's like an X spot. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the X axis. So, right, 
that's that's uh, this spot right there. So is it a is it a sine or a cosine? Everybody see it? It's a cosine, first off, not a sine, because he starts below his middle. So it's a negative cosine, isn't it? He's not starting at the origin, is he? He's not starting on his middle line. He's starting below the middle, not on his middle. So below, it's a, it's a cosine. It's a negative cosine. It's a negative 8 cosine. So, so it's, is it negative 8 or negative 7? It's negative 8, huh? Yeah. So it's not negative 7 cosine. It's not positive. It's not sine. It's not positive. It's not positive. It's not sine. Oh, really? We're done? I don't even need to mess with anything else? Yeah, it's B. It's the only one that's a negative cosine. I, I don't even need to mess around with period. That's the only one that's a negative 8 cosine. It was easier than I thought. I guess it's right. Yeah, if you messed around with it, it would be true. Good? Life kind of electricity problem here. Okay, the current. Da -da -da. I, okay. So they give us this formula here. It's um, 290. I'll write it again. The I, they always use I for current. If you go and take any of those courses, I don't know why they always use I, but they do. 50 pi T. Okay, so the current in amperes is that formula there. That's a funny looking 5. Okay, and uh, what's the period? So, period, that's the first question. Formula for period, again, is 2 pi over B. So the period is 2 pi over... What's B? What's B on that one? Yeah, this whole thing here is the B. Because it the T is like our X, isn't it? It's like our X. So the... Um, so um, 2 pi over B. B is 50 pi. Put that in right there. So then the pi's cancel, 125th. So the period's 125th. Um, they call it tau. I don't know why, whatever. Who cares? And then they're going to say, what's the amplitude? So what's the amplitude? It's that number in the front, 290. And graph the function over two periods. Um, it shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Here, Okay, so there's the three possible graphs. So it's a sine graph. Yeah, they all start at the origin, don't they? Period's 125th. Oh, yeah, let's see. One, it already starts at zero, goes up high, goes high, goes low, back to zero, 125th. There it is, see. So I'm one with the right period. All right, that was.